Husqvarna Viking has three bias binders. And the more I work with these, I am uh, wondering why I don't use them more. So we're gonna define what it takes to use each of the three, what they're for, and how to set up for making your very own original bias tape to go in through them. So first off, we have what I call the cone bias binder. This will take a single one inch wide bias cut fabric, when, when inserted into the cone, it will take and fold both edges in for you, allowing you to go around straight edges and curve edges without any problem whatsoever. Now we're talking single layers, um, up to two layers at a time, places where you might use a serger or bound a, an edge or an armhole. There's lots of different garment construction type projects and we have at the end of this a very unique way to do quilt binding, not in the traditional way, and a free handout on our website if you just follow the link at the bottom of this video. So you'll have to go check these out. Also, all the details for what size goes in which binder will also be spelled, spelled out um, almost like in a little chart so you'll know where to go find all the information for these binders. So this one takes the one inch wide, uh, just sew your strips together, and the more you have, the more you can do, and it's great to have at your fingertips. The next one is the Viking Adjustable Bias Binder. Now this would be great if you're purchasing bias binding, it's already done into the single fold, or you're making your own of various widths. So this will take anywhere from the quarter inch, finish size all the way up to a finished three quarter inch size, which is pretty amazing. That's a pretty big binding that you could put on something. The only thing is, is this mouth is fairly narrow. So we're not talking about quilt batting or anything in here. We're talking about single, maybe two layers of a lightweight fabric. So keep that in mind when you're selecting your fabric that this will go around. And then what I call the jumbo Viking bias binder, it is noted as the bias binder one half inch. That will be the finished size of it. We'll start off with a gigantic two inch strip. And I have found that it is easiest if this is pressed already into the, what I call a single fold bias binding. So we'll do that at the iron and then insert it in here. We're talking, look at how big that mouth is. We can put anywhere um, from quilt batting to something very large or fluffy. Uh, we're talking fleece, that type of thing. This is the binder you wanna have for those larger projects. And then it has a finished size of one half inch. All right, let's get started. To prepare your fabric for making your very own bias binding, start off by taking best press, give it a good spray and press. That way this will kind of give it a nice uh, heavy starched feel. And when you start cutting your bias strips and sewing them together and feeding them through the bias binder, they're gonna work great. Now notice how large a piece of fabric I'm starting with. The larger, the better. That's gonna make the fewer amount of seams it will take to make all your bias strips. If you wanna make your own custom made bias strips with the fabric you wanna use, take your strips, put them right sides together, and stitch them corner to corner. Now I'm actually using a perfect, no, clearly perfect angles tool that I've put on my cabinet here. That's gonna allow me to kinda of get from corner to corner without having to think. So all I have to do is put my corner that I'm shooting for along the center line, and stitch to it. Now I have my stitch length really close together because this is gonna be going through the bias binders and I really wanna make sure it stays where it needs to go. There we go. Stopping with the needle in the down position to do strip after strip, just take the end of the one you just did, lay that down, take your next strip, right side down, kinda of create a little T and then turn it clockwise. Put the fabric right up to the needle and line up your base once again to match the line on the template. And stitch. Hey, perfect every time. When you're done, we're gonna actually take and trim these. I tend to do it right here at the sewing machine. That way I get it exactly what I need. I need about an eighth of an inch seam allowance left here. I want a very minimal amount of seam thickness going through these bias binders and then clip off these little ears off the end. Okay, off to the iron to press these open. Starting with the cone bias binder, we can take our one inch strip, cut it at an angle and slide it into the cone. Now, as it kind of works its way down there, you will need to kind of help it just a little bit with a little stiletto or something sharp. Notice I'm doing this with the binder not on the machine, and that way, as it finally gets uh, coming out the end, I can get a hold of it. 
Once it gets started, you're gonna see that it's already turning the fabric both on the top and at the bottom. And as we put it on the machine, what I am gonna do is take a few stitches into the strip just to see where my needle position is, my stitch length, and what I like on that. Okay, see how it's just coming to right around that cone? Once we wanna put our fabric in, we can just go ahead and slide that right on in. I've got a stitch length of almost four, actually. So I just need to take my fabric, hold it up against the inside of the cone, and then just kind of guide the two together. Let the foot do all the work for you. Now, once I'm done, I leave everything kind of in the machine, just clipping off what I need to see, or... Oh, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Those stitches are perfect, both on the front and on the back. Let me show you how you do a curve. We're just gonna go ahead and put that back into the bias binder. Take a few stitches, kind of help it get started there. Maybe I'll just lift up the foot just a little bit. There we go. That will take it right on in. With the curve, once again, I'm just kind of watching right down in here and making sure I keep as much of it in that bias binder as possible. Now, as I cross over where I did the first seam, that will be a little thicker than normal, so you might need to just kind of help it out the backside just a little bit to get over the thickness. Here's what I love about a bias binder. There's so many places I need just some basic ties where I can just keep on stitching, just run a strip through it and then um, use it for wherever I need it. I've been known to, whenever I've needed a loop, leave a little extra and tack that down on the backside with my regular foot. But look how beautiful that goes all the way around the curves. So that one is the regular Viking uh, cone bias binder. The cone style bias binder will also accommodate the single fold bias binding, whether you've purchased it from a store or made it yourself. Just go ahead and insert it the same way and it will take it right on in, keeping it lined up. Just insert your fabric where you need it. The Viking adjustable bias binder is a foot that I covet for other machines because its capabilities are such a wide range from any size that I actually wanna use. So with a one inch size that I've, or one inch wide strip that I've gone ahead and folded down, when I slide that in, once again, do it while the foot is off the machine for ease. And then what we're gonna do is this screw here will move its mouth so it hugs up against the unit here. So I'm gonna slide it towards it until I see that it's gonna keep that fabric, oh, a little too tight. Keep that so it will flow freely through the foot. All right, there, that will set it up nicely. And then do a little test back and forth. And then as you put it on the machine, you can take some stitches and just make sure once again, your needle position is properly set up. Your stitch length is accommodating the thickness. And then all you need to do is insert the fabric right into the mouth and you'll be bias binding so your heart's content. For the Husqvarna Viking bias binder one half inch, or as I call it, the jumbo size, we're taking the two inch strip that we cut and we're gonna put it into the Clover bias tape maker. It's the largest size they make, size 50 that is on the package, or as it will be pressed down to a one inch size. See how that's just gonna roll right in there? So as we put our iron on here, and if you do set it for a steam setting, that's really gonna help press this in place and hold it nice there. It's so just gonna work it so as those pieces are coming in, they're coming in at an equal amount. Go all the way down. See how nice that's gonna finish up? And then when it actually finishes, it will be about a half inch finished around your project. With the Viking Bias Binder one half inch, we're talking about being able to go around fabric that has batting in it. Look at how big this mouth is. That is how much it can reach around and bind. Now with this, we have a two inch strip that we have folded using the bias tape makers. But instead of putting in the normal area, we're actually gonna put it in the gill area, which is kind of back here. This is gonna help 
support it as it's going around the fabric, allowing you not to have to hold it so much. So once you get it started, just take your little stiletto and bring it in, and then we'll get it all lined up for where it needs to go. Place it on the machine. Now when we're talking about going around these, these pieces, I like to round the corners as much as possible. Now that might all, not always be the case, but for practical uses like pot holders here, this is one we actually just started on the corner here, went straight, went all the way around the edge, and then made a tail once we got back where we started. This will come back and we'll attach with the sewing machine and leave ourselves a little loop. Wouldn't that be great? How quick and easy would that be? So as we get started, we'll go ahead and take a few stitches. Again, adjust for your needle position as needed. I'm gonna move it a little bit to the left side here. Go ahead and place as much of the fabric in the mouth of the bias binder. Take a few stitches, make sure your stitch length is long enough. I'm gonna make it this up to three and a half just so it can work its way easily around the project and set it for the needle to stop in the down position. And then really just let the machine do the work for you as you go. All I'm doing is kind of holding this all the way in. See how that's just gripping right along the side? And then when we get to the, the corner area here, we're just gonna make sure that our fabric stays nice and hugged up against that area in there as we go around it. And just let the foot do the work for you. Again, if you need to, use your stiletto just to help it go where it needs to go, but really, it's gonna do the work for you. Oh, isn't that easy? Now, if there's a time where you can't actually do a corner corner that can be rounded, what I'm gonna do is show you next how to do a, a regular corner. So as I approach this other side, we'll just kinda keep going here. First off, we're gonna sew right to the end of the quilted fabric. So last stitch is gonna go right in there. right up to the edge. If you want, you could back stitch or touch the fix button. There, that's the lock we want, right along the edge. Needle up, foot up. Take the fabric completely out of the machine, and this is where we're actually going to create our little miter here. So we're gonna kinda give it a little finger press, and then we're gonna kinda make that nose come back together around the fabric. So we're just gonna take it there, I'm doing the same thing you're seeing on the front side as the back side. And then as we bring that around nice and close, actually, you know what I did last time? I did actually cut these threads, so I don't have to worry about the, any extra loops. Go ahead and cut those. There, that'll be a lot easier. Put that into position, hold that in place, bring that back around, up into the bias binder. Bring that foot down. Oh, I like where it is. I'm gonna even hand turn that needle so I get it to catch right where I want. Start with some locking stitches right there and then take off all the way down the next side. Woohoo! Who thought you could do corners with a bias finder? And there we go. Isn't that awesome? Corners, no problem. Ready for a bonus pattern? We have a double bind binding for your next quilt using your brand new bias binders. Pick your favorite one. Now this one is using a one quarter inch finished size. The free pattern is on our website. Look in the description below the YouTube video for the link to this exact information. And this is done all on the sewing machine. You're gonna start by taking your two and a half inch or two and a quarter inch binding that you usually make, Fold it in half, and then the fold you're gonna bind with the bias binder. It's gonna look something like this. It's all kind of fun when you're doing it. Just a quick all the way through your bias binder. Then you're gonna take your quilt, and you're gonna go to the back side. So flip it over, and just like you regularly put binding on, you're gonna go ahead and start, do your corners, miter them just like you're used to. Everything's the same until you're done. Then. Go ahead and turn it to the right side. When you turn it to the right side, you're gonna reach for a edge stitch foot or a walking foot with a stitch in the ditch foot that allows you to move the needle over. As you move the needle over, you're adding the second row of stitching you see on the finished quilt here with the bias binding. It's really fun. Just miter the corners and away you go. Now that you know about the bias binders, go find them, use them, and save yourself a ton of time.